My name is Ron Heiser. I'm the Chief Program Engineer for the Mustang Mach-E. Uh, I'm going to do a quick walk around of the, uh, of the car, uh, in, outside and in, and we'll, we'll take you through some of the details. Ah, this is the phone. This is the key. Good. <laughs> phone is the key. Yeah. So, uh, obviously, looking at the front of the car, you get the sense of a, an electrified Mustang. We brought the tri-bar tail lamps into the front of the car with the tri-bar theme on the, on the headlamps. You can see the nice curve in the hood and so forth. Some critical things about an electric vehicle. Aero is really important. It's actually more important on an electric vehicle than it is on, a, uh, on an ice. So we spent a lot of time in the wind tunnel making sure that we got the styling right but also the aero right. We added these first surface grill shutters. So most of the time they're closed, but when we need extra cooling, they open. One of the big, one of the big times that, that they're open is actually when you're charging the battery because the batteries warm up. In the wind tunnel, we found a lot of critical input around this corner and how to keep the flow attached in this corner, how to shape some of the cor you know, some of the surfaces here but really it's all about keeping that flow attached to the car. If you move around to the side, you really get start to get the sense of, of a Mustang in terms of, we really wanted to keep the hood longer. Even though we have a very short overhang, you actually have a long hood. And as you're coming up more on the side here, from a studio design studio standpoint, sports cars have what we call a very long dash to axle. That's basically the touchdown point of the A-pillar in relative to where the center line of the of the wheel is. And if you look at most utility vehicles, they have a relatively short dash to axle. You look like at a Mustang Coupe or a sports car, you can really get that sense of how long that dash to axle is. So it was very important to get the touchdown of this A-pillar relative to the center line of wheel real important. Coming around to the side of the car here, you can see all the body sculpting we put in. One of the big things we did was we moved the door handle off of the car. It gave us a lot, you know, off of the door. It gave us a lot of freedom in surfacing. Very simple door handle to use. You walk up to the car, push the button, and it opens for you. I'll do it a little bit slower, just so you get a sense. The door presents, it's an easy opening, one movement. Very similar on the rear door, but on the rear door, we, we did a, spent a lot of time talking about who gets in and out of the out of a rear of a, of a utility vehicle. It's a family car, lots of little kids. We studied how little kids open doors. If you really take a look at a, a little kid opening a truck or a utility door, what they basically do is they'll open the door like this then they grab it like this and they push it open and they walk around it. So what we did, no door handle, but we gave a very friendly surface here. It's a nice touch, soft, for, for a kid or anybody to, to grab onto it and uh, open the door. Want me to hit nice. it again? Swing back around here. Yep. Oh, so I'm out of your way. It didn't close. Let me just... Now, one of the main reasons, that was one reason why we didn't put the door handle in the back, but the other is we, so we put the door pull here. This door pull is in, invisible in the wind tunnel. Because of the wake of the mirror, the aerodynamics don't even know that that handle is there. Huh, because it okay? blends in it with blends the line. It blends in with the flow as it's reattaching. When you get back here, putting a door handle here would have affected our aerodynamics. So we wanted to avoid that as well. So this in itself acts as your that's the door handle. grab door yeah, handle, if you will. You grab. From a design element, one of the one of the big features that we wanted to carry through was the look of a of a coupe. You know, a fastback look. But we had but we hid all of the headroom, the rear headroom, in the way we executed the roof. You can see we have this uh, a roof ditch molding that's like no other roof ditch molding in the industry that gets wider and starts to twist and here's where all your headroom is 
So when you get in the back seat of this car, uh -huh. you have a ton of headroom. I'm six foot three. My boss is six foot six. We've sat in the back of this thing together and both have plenty of room. It's interesting because you do, I mean, you see yep. the height of that. Yep. And so you can see how it's growing and twisting and, and, and enabling the roof to really float higher. We don't think any other utility vehicles really tried to do this before. You have some of these fastback utilities, but they lose all of their headroom. Without without sacrificing coefficient C exactly. and the headroom in the back. Brilliant. And of course, the other big styling element is giving this nice hip and shoulder to the car. This is very Mustang-like. Moving to the back of the car, you definitely get the three-bar tail lamp theme and a new modern way for a utility vehicle. Uh, again, we think really grabs the essence of a what a Mustang utility vehicle should look like. Just, uh, in terms of, of space, we have a lot of nice space here. These seats fold flat. This came over from our, our, our European team as part of the Puma. It's a patent. This is a, a very unique uh, um, parcel shelf cover. Mm -hmm or luggage compartment uh, cover as well. It stays out of the way as the, uh, you can see as the lift gate opens, this opens with it. It's very light, easy to store. Most times when you see people with utility vehicles and they have the, the covers, mm -hmm. those covers are end up in their garages. So just, can you take these off or no? Oh yeah. You can, okay, so it just detaches easy, yep, easy right here. Move. That's a lot of cargo space. Yep. And you know we've got we've got two levels of of space that you can easily easily that as I say easy with my phone. <laughs> uh, but if you have something taller, you can now take the cover down right. lower. So it's, it's it's pretty easy and straightforward to use. Underneath is where we have the storage of the uh, uh, charge mm -hmm. plus our uh, this is our because um, we don't have a spare tire yeah so it's our our T, what we call our TMK kit so from a design perspective Ron I can definitely see I mean seeing it in person I can really see yeah. the the rear shoulder resembling what a Mustang would look like yeah and then the modern lights tail lights Yep. Yeah, the studio team did an outstanding job. What's your favorite color that really shows off? My favorite the car? color. I have a. I, I actually like a lot of them. <laughs> I will tell you, I have a. I have a GT ordered in Grabber Blue. Yes. Yes. I and love I that blue. A, I have a. Uh, a premium ordered, but it, I don't see the color here. It's in our space white color. These are all. Okay, can we talk about the trims real sure. quick? Sure, while we're at it? Yeah. So what we're looking at here, this is a premium all-wheel drive. Mm -hmm. From an exterior standpoint, what you're getting with a premium is, is you're getting the high-gloss accents. Mm -hmm. the, the, the Select comes with uh, a molding color. You're getting 19-inch wheels and tires. So you're talking about the accent meaning this, yes. this, and Just then mainly this. Okay, it's this. It's Got the it. Wheel arches, and it's it, it it's this lower area okay. here. On a select, it's molding color. Okay, you can actually see it on that car. Ah, I over see it. There. Wow, that's a big difference. Yeah, it really adds kind of, uh, like you said, a premium, premium look premium to look. it. Um, the other really big difference on the exterior is the uh, headlamps mm -hmm. on the on the select you get um, you get LED lamps but the reflector LEDs. okay these are projector LEDs higher content lamp you get a, a more dynamic uh, signature lighting element so those are really the big differences from an exterior standpoint. What are the conditions again for the, the flaps to open and close? Well, it's anytime the system needs cooling. Okay. But, but really, 
one of the biggest times that it's needed is, is when you're charging the battery, especially if you're like at a DC fast charger. Um, the batteries will start to get warm, and so the the louvers will open. The placement of the battery, is it completely throughout? The placement, placement of the battery, basically, is from here to here. So, it, between the axles. So, it's completely on the floor? Under, under the floor, we have two battery sizes. Uh, our extended range has two levels of battery under the rear seats. Uh, our uh, our base vehicle, our, our selects, have um, just a single level of layer of batteries all the way across. And where do I charge? Charge port doors here. So you've got for a level one or a level two. Okay. And then for DC fast got charge. It. This is your charge indicator, so it'll tell you if you know are you a quarter, half, three quarters, all the way. Fantastic. Should we jump in? Yeah, I'm going to let you get in. Okay. 